Have you ever wondered why it's almost always the same textbooks, the same lectures, the same applications, but only a few handful people, only a few handful students who top and crack an exam? While most others lie in the mid range and some fail, what are the things that toppers do differently that make them toppers? I'll tell you a hint, it's not just luck, it's about making a system and using techniques that actually rely on science and boost your memory. Hi everyone, if it's your first time here, I'm Dr. Anush Bachel, a first year internal medicine resident at GMC Nagpur. And in this video, I'll share five study techniques that I myself have used and I see a lot of other toppers using in order to get ahead of the competition. These techniques silently decide ranks, marks, colleges, and even the way your life looks like in the future. Using these study techniques, I was able to get nine distinctions in MBBS and two gold medals with cracking need UG and PG in the first attempt. So I'm sure I know a few things about studying. Okay, let us start. Rule number one is output is more than input. No, I'm not talking about the nephrology note that I write down whenever I get to see a patient with deranged serum creatinine, but I'm actually talking about the way you study. The key idea is toppers don't reread, they retrieve. That means they are actively pulling out the memory from their brains back onto paper or back onto a test or back out into the world. Rereading is just looking at the notes over and over and over and over again till those things become fine imprints on the back of your head. But retrieving that information is what actually makes the process much better. For example, if I tell you the capital of Vietnam is Hanoi city and I tell you to read it 10 times, you might remember it after 14 or 15 days. But if I tell you to ask yourself the same question every day, you will definitely remember it by the end of the 15th day. Every morning you wake up, what is the capital of Vietnam? It's Hanoi city. And when you are actually retrieving that information, that is what makes the pathway and neural link much more stronger. Your brain actually does not really learn that much by reading. It learns by retrieving the information and remembering something actively. So how do you actually use it in practical life. Well, I'll show you with an example. Let's say that you are reading beta blockers from a pharmacology textbook in a cozy winter afternoon. What do you do after you have read the chapter of beta blockers? You close the textbook and you go back to watching reels on Instagram. Instead of watching reels on Instagram, after you have closed the textbook, just take a piece of paper and write down everything that you remember about that chapter. Okay, beta blockers. These are the cardio selective ones. These are the non cardio selective ones. Which one will I use when I need a short acting drug? Which one will I use when I need a long time prophylaxis control? What are the few contraindications of beta blocker? what are the few indications of beta blockers? How and when should I prescribe a beta blocker and what is the dose of it? What are the common side effects of beta blockers? Just try to remember each and everything that you've just read and write it down on a piece of paper. Now open the book back once again and try to see where you have missed and what all have you remembered. The way I used to do this was on my iPad where I used to just open the notes tab and after every session of studying, I used to try to remember each word of the lecture and scribble it down using my own notes. Now these notes were absolutely crap. They were just made for the purpose for me to actually retrieve the information actively. You know, I actually use this technique in real life as well when I'm treating patients. Whenever I see a patient in the casualty and I admit him to a different ward, let's say it's a female patient and I'm in the male ward. I admit that patient in a female ward, after I go back to my male ward, I actually think actively about what I remember about the patient and try to make a diagnosis if the diagnosis was uncertain at the time of the admission. When you try to actively recall what you've seen or what you've learned is the way that you remember things. And guess what? The patients that I actively recall from the back of my head, I remember when I see it on rounds. The first few times when you try this method, it will be difficult. You will not be able to remember everything. Maybe you remember just 20% or 30% of what you've read, but that's the beauty of it. The 10 or 20% that you've actually remembered will be with you for a much longer time. So I hope the first method was really clear and it was just as simple as taking five extra minutes out of your time schedule and making a note of what you've read so far, tracking down how the story started and how it ended and what are the things that you should look out for and not just closing the lecture, keeping the book away and going out for party. Just five minutes of doing this after everything that you've read new will make you a king or a queen of remembering new information. Let's go to point number two. It is forgetting intentionally. I'm sure you have learned so many subjects over the years, but do you remember a subject that you've studied in seventh grade or eighth grade? Do you remember a single chapter from social studies or English or maths in my case? No, that is because even if you were a master of that information at one time, when it was useless, your brain automatically deleted it. Even if you scored 99 out of 100 in maths, maybe five years down the line, you will not be able to solve a simple linear equation. Just kidding, everybody knows how to solve a linear equation. Here's what research says. About 70% of the information is forgotten within 24 hours of reading it. But if you review that information after one day, after three days and exactly after seven days, that figure drops from 70 just to 10%. That means there's a 90% chance you will remember something just by three revisions. 
and you will remember them for a long time. To plot it on a graph, it seems like this. This is the forgetting curve and exactly as you can see is the memory fading over time. So here's how you use it in a much more intentional way to boost your studies. You start with day one when you have actually studied something new. When you're studying something, you definitely make some notes out of it. Make sure you read that notes on day three, day seven and day 14 and not just read it, use active recall while reading it. So after every note that you've read, try to visually imagine what was written. Try to ask yourself the questions about the topics that you've read and follow active recall. Not just active recall, but place it over the days which I've told you. This way, you will beat the forgetting curve and the information will be in your mind for a long period of time. This is very easy if you're just focusing on a couple of subjects. But what happens if you're preparing for a very big exam which has multiple subjects? For example, I appeared for NEET PG last year. It had 19 subjects and I used to have space repetitions all over the place. So how do I keep track of everything which I've read so far? That's when a whiteboard comes in handy. Just take a whiteboard or a giant piece of chart paper and write down all the things that you're studying in a week. Make a weekly timetable of things. Let's say the first two days you're reading medicine, the next two days you're reading surgery, the next three days you're reading ortho, anesthesia, OBGY. Make sure that these subjects are repeated in some way or the other in the next week by just your notes or just by the question bank. Let's say that you've studied medicine two days and then you've started on with the new subject. Make sure that you're solving the medicine question banks even though you're studying the next subject. And when you're done with the second subject, let's say that you're surgery and you move on to the third subject, make sure that you are solving some surgery question banks in between reading the third subject. So by doing this, you're spacing your repetitions while also maintaining a focus streak on the current subject that you're learning. And a few subjects will require extra, extra revisions, extra, extra recalls, which are purely fact-based. For example, pharmacology is really fact-based. Microbiology is really fact-based. What I used to do for these subjects, I used to have so many charts on my almari, on my walls, so that whenever my eyes goes towards that, I used to quickly revise it. Even though it was not active, but it was still spaced repetition. It's better to revise few things every day than to just close a textbook and never read it again till the second revision arrives. When, if you do that from the second revision also, you will feel the same emptiness inside you. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Now let's move on to number three. It is emotional anchors. So you know how when we are watching a movie and even after you come back home after watching a movie, you remember a few scenes of it that were really strong and powerful. Maybe you remember a scene from a movie that you saw 10 years ago or maybe you remember every single line from that amazing spider-man movie that you really love why does that happen so the reason is if we have emotional connections with our information that information is retained with us for a much longer time period so how do we apply it to our subjects how do we apply it to our world and how do we apply it to learn more turn the boring information you read on a piece of paper into emotional experiences like stories like cartoons like memes like messages like mnemonics Whatever you want, just add some emotions to it. You cannot do this for every single thing, but you can definitely do it for complicated stuff. I'm sure you must be reading so many things on a day-to-day -day basis that you can animate into drawings or cartoons that you will remember for a long time. And one of the best ways to use this technique in real life is by using Oswald's NCRT Neat Flex textbooks. These are the latest books from Oswald and they have questions from each and every single line of NCRT. And if you combine all the three books, they have up to 3,500 questions which are framed from every single line of NCRT. So you'll be converting each text into a question and that way you'll be remembering it in a better manner. Each chapter in this book has concepts, mnemonics and a summarization page which will help you remember the key points in one look. As always, Oswald books always provides a trend analysis so that you know how many questions appear from each chapter every year in the exam. Use my code ANUJ10 to get up to 50% off on Oswal books. I have trusted them for years and I think it's one of the best books out there for neat UG preparation. So yes, give it a try. Link in my bio. Again, use the code ANUJ10. Number four is deep work. So I've talked about deep work quite a lot and I'll talk about it once again because it's that important to me. Imagine this. It's a 10th class and it's your board examination. You have just been allotted a center. You're sitting there with all the concentration, all the focus right at your fingertips. The answer sheet is given to you along with the question paper and the time starts. Without a moment's notice, your 100% focus is shifted onto the question paper and you're writing answers like crazy. Without even knowing how the time is passing, every time you're looking at the clock, half an hour is passed by. And just like that, within a few minutes, an entire hour goes by. For you, time is flying, but you're also in a very deep state of mind where you're constantly focused and just writing down continuously. For the outside world, three hours pass by, but for you, it's just a few minutes and it's just a few questions that you've answered. And just like that, the time is over. But in those three hours, your mind has focused so much energy into writing the answers, retrieving the memory and putting down, penning them down into words is the kind of deep state I'm talking about. When you are in a deep state, your mind goes on to another level. 
where you're not thinking about any distractions, where you're not thinking about anything else apart from your goal. That is the kind of deep state I want you to achieve. It's the reason why I was able to manage content creation as well as scoring decently in all of my exams during my MBBS years. Not just that, but also cracking neat PG while having a full-time YouTube channel while doing internship. Because I used to enter a flow state that was powerful enough for me to crunch in multiple hours of work into just a few hours. Be it video shooting, be it making content, be it doing work as an intern, be it studying as a medical I had trained my mind to be focused in short bursts of time where I was not at all distracted by anything and I was in a deep flow state. How was I able to achieve this? The answer is simple. I used to cut off all the distractions as much as possible. Isolate myself and isolate my thought process to the goal that I'm trying to achieve and then build a system around it. For example, let's say that I want to finish this one chapter and I have maybe one hour. I used to build a system. Okay, this is how we will do it. First, I will read about the introduction. Then I'll read about the pathophysiology. I'll look up some of the examples on the internet without getting distracted by the memes. I'll form some emotional connection to it. I'll take some notes out of it. And finally, I'll learn how to use it in clinical life. The same thing can be done for literally any other thing in life. As a resident, if I don't have interns sometime, I have to do the internship work as well. So let's say that I've got 30 patients and I have to sample each of these patients. In my mind, I enter a flow state. I arrange everything, all the bulbs, all the forms are ready. And in one go, I break 30 patients and take out the samples. And it takes less than 30 minutes. So when you achieve a flow state of mind, you are 10 times more productive. You can just ignore everything around you and focus on one task. And that is a deep state of mind that toppers actually enter. You don't have to be studying 12 hours to pass an exam. You have to be studying only enough hours for your brain to absorb information and regurgitate it back. If you train your mind to be in a flow state, you will have unlocked a skill that will last you for a lifetime. And the best part, this focus is like a muscle. The more you use it, the better you become at it. The last thing which I want to talk about is teach to master. When you want to inculcate every single point which I've talked about in this video into one point, it would be this. You don't really know a topic well until you can teach it to somebody who knows absolutely nothing about it. And that's exactly what I used to do. I've always had a study partner with me throughout my MBBS journey, throughout my NEET PG journey. And to that study partner, I used to teach everything which I had learned that day. Ask the questions about it, revise everything with her and just share every single new thing which I had learned today. And even if she was not aware about the topic, the mechanism of action or the side effects, I was able to correctly teach her that. That just made me sure that I'm able to understand the topic well. The basic idea is when you're trying to explain something to somebody, you're forced to make it into as simple terms as possible. And simplification is the highest level of understanding. So how do you use it in practical life? Exactly what I talked about in the first point was after you've read something, you close down the book, you try to recall the memory and write the notes of it like you were teaching it to somebody who has never read the topic. Or just phone up a friend and tell them about what you've read today and exactly how it matters. I've had multiple study sessions all along my MBBS life where I've just explained something which I've read new. Everybody has loved it and I've been a part of many such sessions where I have been on the receiving end. I've heard from somebody about what they have learned and it has made us all grow. Or if you're just somebody who has no friends, you can just record record voice notes, turn on the audio recording and try to explain everything that you've read to yourself within a few minutes. Trust me, just doing this for a few minutes will have you audio notes that you can save and that you can use and that you can listen to later and use it as a quick source of revision when you're listening on 2x or 3x. And every night, if you can summarize what you've learned every day, all throughout the day, the difficult concepts, you know that you've mastered it because explaining something simply is the best way to master it. So yes, toppers aren't superhuman. They are just human like you, but they don't rely on emotions. They don't rely on anything. They build systems, they build patterns and they stick to it. They don't study longer. They don't study harder. They study smarter. And if this video has changed the way you study, make sure to subscribe my channel and also hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one. It's your boy, Dr. Anuj. Goodbye.